Alrighty then, thank you for tuning in. I'm Matthew Baker of Beautiful New York Tours. There is a very common complaint among historians and aesthetes in New York City that there are not enough statues, public statues, of real-life historic women in New York City. Now, that is a very fair and very true complaint, even if the popular understanding of the details sometimes get muddled. Uh, there is a rather badly written and badly researched uh, article that floats around the internet now and then claiming that there are only five. There are, in fact, over 20. Nevertheless, when you consider the comparative number of statues of real-life historic men in the city, even 20 is a rather shamefully low number given how many great women in New York City history there were. And my favorite, the one I would most like to see immortalized as a statue, was Nellie Bly. Nellie Bly more or less invented investigative journalism. She had made her name as a journalist in the provincial papers, but like everyone knew that if you wanted to be anybody in this business, you gotta make it in New York. So she came to New York, she came to an area that you can still go to today, Park Row, down by City Hall. It's not what it was then, but in those days it was Newspaper Row. And she went to the editors of every newspaper on Newspaper Row. She went to the Times, the Tribune, the Herald, the World, you name it. And she asked everyone, do women have a future in journalism? And every single editor told her no. So she went back to the provincial papers and she published her findings. The next day, Joseph Pulitzer of the New York World offered her a job. The job she took involved an amazing and dangerous adventure. She wanted to report on the conditions at the insane asylum at what was then known as Blackwell's Island. Today, Blackwell's Island is called Roosevelt Island, and it's right in the middle of the East River. Uh, it's a beautiful place, and I recommend it. The building that was once the insane asylum is now condominiums, where the only thing insane is the prices. Now, Nellie Bly knew that if she just showed up at the asylum and said, hi, I'm a reporter and I'd like to report on the conditions at your hospital, they would put their best face on. She didn't want that. She wanted the real dirt. So she arranged with Pulitzer to have herself declared insane, and she went undercover as a patient to report on the conditions at the asylum. The plan was for Pulitzer to spring her from the charade after two days, three days, four days. Had he forgotten her? After ten days in the asylum, Joseph Pulitzer sprang Nellie Bly and the resulting book, never mind a newspaper article, the resulting book, Ten Days in a Madhouse, burst the door open on the health industry with a focus on mental health in particular. It was the first serious expose on that subject and it launched Nellie Bly's career. So you can still see where she worked for Pulitzer and you can still see on Roosevelt Island where she posed as a madwoman in that asylum. But that was not the end of the adventures of Nellie Bly. Uh, at the time that she was reporting, Jules Verne, the great French novelist, had recently published Around the World in 80 Days. Nellie Bly said, I can do better than that. And everyone said, no, you can't. You're a woman. There are various needs you will have that simply cannot be met. It simply can't be done. And Nellie Bly, in classic fashion, said, Look, have your paper send a man. Tell me what day he leaves New York. I will leave the same day, and I will beat him. And she did. You can also see where Nellie Bly is buried up at Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, in a comparatively simple grave, you know, for a life that was anything but simple. For this and other lives that are anything but simple, 
I sure hope it will be safe for you to visit New York City soon. When you do, please check me out at Beautiful New York Tours. You can search Beautiful New York Tours on Facebook or email me at baker.tours at yahoo.com. Again, that is baker.tours at yahoo. Thank you very much.